and we're going back in time again. Hi everyone, I'm Sadrine. Welcome to a new The Flash Review. As you probably noticed, this is in live and also I'm by myself. Yes, America's traveling, so he wasn't able to be here to do the review. But fear not, we will have a live discussion and Q&A for the finale on Wednesday, 12.30 p.m. Pacific time, 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. Keep an eye out we'll be discussing this more. In the meantime, I did want to share some of my thoughts on the finale already, so let's jump right into it with some quick thoughts. After last week's finale, I did not expect to have to see more of Henry dying in this whole scene. I was like, why Flash? I was I was okay with just moving to the funeral. I did not need to see this anymore. It was so heartbreaking. I also thought that Wells was going to stay on Earth 1 while Jesse was going to go on Earth 2, which is kind of the plan she had laid out for him, but it seems like he decided to go back with her to Earth 2 at the end of the episode. And any concern I have over this might be completely irrelevant now that Barry has changed the timeline, but we'll talk about that later. I gotta admit, I was also really disappointed that we didn't get anything with Jesse and Wally. At this point, I don't understand the point of this whole scene of having the speed force go through them and then they're like unconscious and then Jesse's unconscious. I mean, was it all just to have Barry wake her up? I just, I just feel like that was kind of a waste. Really? There's nothing, no no effects to this happening to them? Why did we make such a big deal out of this? So I'm still holding out hope that it will impact them in season three. Now let's talk about locking Barry away. So the team decided together that Barry was not in the right mindset to make decisions, which I can't really argue with. He was pretty upset with his father dying, understandably, and they decided that they were gonna try to take down Zoom by themselves, which, you know, they almost did. Except that Joe got taken to Earth 2 as well, which, you know, that didn't work out really well. I did like the fact that no matter what, they said they were gonna close the rift, even if Joe was there, but of course, you know, we can't leave him there. And I also really like the fact that they did decide to put Barry aside a little bit because a lot of the times in shows, even when, when the main character, superhero, is having a tough time, he's still the one that you follow and you know, no matter how much grief they have and even if their decisions are not great, but in this case, they treated him like they would have treated any other character as in, you need to take some time, the same way that Caitlyn needed to take some time. So I enjoyed that they acknowledged that. Of course, Barry wasn't just gonna let Joe stay on Earth 2, and with Wally's help, conveniently, he's out and uh, he has a plan, which leads us to the race. We've got some more run, Barry, run. You know, no matter how many times they say it, I still love it. But the best part of this whole racing thing is that Barry took Zoom's idea of using a time remnant to help him out, but actually used it for the better good versus Zoom just used it to make himself more powerful. So I think that really showed the difference between Barry and Zoom. The time remnant Barry sacrificed himself to save Earth, whereas the time remnant Zoom sacrifices himself so his other self can then become more powerful and kill everyone. So they stopped the Magnetar, and I think probably Barry realized he was never going to be able to take down Zoom by himself. Uh, Zoom was just a little too crazy and a little too powerful at this point. I mean, he does have Barry's speed force in him in addition to his speed force, so yeah. But because he knows that the speed force is kind of on their side and they're trying to rebalance everything. He kind of bet on the fact that if he brought some of the time wraith with him by going to get his time remnant, they might be a little more pissed about Hunter than they are about him, which, you know, paid off. They did take Zoom away. And um, I guess that's the end of Zoom. A little anticlimactic of the end of Zoom, I felt. It reminded me a little bit of the movie Ghost where you have like the, I guess maybe the Wraith or like evil, uh, shadowy thing that come and get the people to drag them to hell or something if they haven't been like good people. I was like, that was kind of the same thing. They dragged him away like, no, similar scene. Maybe it's just me but that's just what it reminded me of. So 
Zoom has been taken down by the speed force and the wraith and all of that. And that leaves us with one more reveal. The man in the iron mask, finally, we found out who it was and it was Henry's doppelganger whose name is actually Jay Garrick. Now we've had so many theories about who the man in the iron mask is ever since we released our who the man in the iron mask is video. At the time we made it, Americ was like, it's Wally West, which I thought was a cool theory. But then as the episodes kept coming, there were more hints. And I think the turning point for us was when Henry actually told Barry, oh, my mom's maiden name was Garrick. And I'm like, oh, well then it's gotta be him, right? Or there was a, I think we kind of realized it had to be connected somehow because why would he just bring up the fact that his mother's maiden name was Garrick? And then of course they kill Henry last week. So I'm like, well, it's definitely him and the Iron Mask because it would be good story-wise to have the character die, but then he's not really dead, sort of. So I guess the surprise in this episode for me wasn't that big because the whole Garrick thing made me think, yeah, it's probably Henry. I almost wish that they hadn't revealed that piece of information because I think that was the biggest clue. Overall, the reveal was pretty cool. I do wish we had had more of a scene between the two, especially because Barry just lost Henry or maybe, maybe it would have been kind of nice to have like a moment between the two, even though it's not Henry, but I don't know. I expected a little more from this whole mystery than we got. So Jay Garrick, Wells, and Jesse are just all kind of going back to their Earth, and that leads us to the ending. It should all just be happy and wonderful, but it's not. First of all, we get Wes Allen, but it's kind of like in episode 15 of season one, Out of Time, where we get Iris saying to Barry that she loves him and then he changes everything by going back in time, and this is exactly what happened again in this episode. So Barry decides to go back in time and to stop his mom from being murdered. Why would you do that? No, Barry, this is gonna change everything. Like literally there's so many repercussions to him going back in time and changing such a key event in his life. So I, pff, so, so many things to talk about, of course, in this. Now, I'm sure America and I will be discussing this a little more, probably in a different video, but right now, the thoughts that I have on what that means for the show, and obviously they're setting up season three, either they're completely doing a reboot of the show, and then we're gonna have this alternate timeline from now on, or they're gonna have Barry come back for a little bit and then realize, maybe I made a mistake, let me go back and just, I think it's better to just let things happen the way they happened. Of course, part of me wants to keep things the way they are because I just like how they are now. But then another part of me thinks, well, sometimes it is interesting when you change things up a little bit and you have new elements. And I think it depends what this new timeline looks like. So now I'm kind of freaking out because we have to wait until this fall to find out what happens next and are they really changing the timeline and what does it mean and are just... Ugh. Overall, it was a decent ending. Not as good as season one finale for me, but uh, it wrapped up quite a few things and I think probably my favorite part was the actual setup for season three because I did not see that coming. I actually was wondering, how are they gonna end the season? Oh, okay. That's how we're doing it, right. Ugh, so frustrating. But you know, I have to start, I have to think about this a little more and kind of process what just happened because I just, yeah, too many thoughts in my mind. Those were my thoughts, but of course, I would love to hear your thoughts on the finale. Were you satisfied with how Zoom ended? Are you freaking out about Barry going back in time again? Let me know in the comments. Uh, don't forget that America and I will be having a live discussion and Q&A today, Wednesday at 12.30 p.m. Pacific time, 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. If you want to come and join us and ask us questions or discuss the episode, that'll be fun. I also want to thank you guys so much for hanging out with us with our reviews of The Flash, sharing your thoughts and comments. It's been really fun reviewing the show. The season has been amazing. I can't wait for season three. Thank you for watching, commenting, liking, all of that. And thank you so much for watching this final review, and I'll see you soon. Bye! I think I started thinking way too complicated because my first initial thought when we first saw the man in the iron mask and we realized he was spelling J and it was even before we found out that 
you know, Jay Garrick, the fake Jay Garrick was actually Zoom, I thought, oh, he's a real Jay Garrick. And then Jay is not Jay. But then I thought, no, that's too easy. Maybe it was something else. I should have just stuck with my initial thought of like, he's just spelling his name. But you know, 